Hi everybody, it's Peter Schiff. It's Wednesday, uh, November 18th, 2009. Well, another day, another record high for gold and silver. Uh, you know, earlier this morning, uh, we had much bigger gains. Gold was up over $10. I think silver was up another 40 cents or so. They surrendered a lot of those gains uh, later in the day, but still managed to close positive new closing highs. A record high for gold, not a record high for silver, but certainly a new high uh, for this calendar year. We did get above $20 an ounce on silver back in 2008. I expect that high to be taken out before before this year is, is over. The dollar, again, uh, lost some ground today. It was weaker this morning, recovered some of those losses, but the dollar index still managed to drop about 20 points. But it's still hanging in uh, just above that key uh, 75 handle. We've been a little bit below it, but I, I do think ultimately we're going to break well below it. We got some economic news today. First of all, on housing starts, they dropped, but it's interesting that when they report the housing starts, they say that they unexpectedly fell. I mean, why, why do people expect housing starts not to fall? There's a glut of houses. we got to stop building houses. It's unfortunate that because of all the government stimulus, the artificially low interest rates and the subsidies, we're still building houses that in a free market we wouldn't be building because we're adding to the problem. Talking about a problem, we got the CPI numbers that came out today. And the consumer price index was up three tenths of one percent, which was triple what they were looking for. They were looking for one tenth of one percent. Well, first of all, the fact that consumer prices are rising in an environment where the economy is contracting, uh, that's a problem in and of itself. I mean, prices should be falling in a weakened economy. The fact that they're rising just shows how much inflation there is, even in a weak economy. And of course, one of the things that's holding uh, the CPI down is that rents are falling. Rents are actually down. But we know rents are going to go down because there's a housing glut and there's all these unemployed people. So rents are going to be under pressure uh, for a long time. But other than that, things like food and energy that are going up are going to keep going up. They're going to go up at a much faster rate as more and more inflation is created. But some of that inflation is going to be masked by a falling rents, which is part of our housing glut and our falling standard of living where workers can't afford to pay rent. But that doesn't mean there's no inflation. It just means that your budget is being is being comprised more and more of things like food and energy, so you don't have as much room left over for rent. But ultimately, what's going to happen to our housing stock is if landlords can't get a decent rent out of their properties, they're just not going to maintain them. And so the properties are going to deteriorate in value. And so you're going to pay less for rent, but you're not going to be renting as nice a property because it's going to be in disrepair. You know, one of the most interesting stats that came out of the CPI was the information on cars. Car prices for the month, new car prices were up 1.6%. That's the biggest gain in 28 years. Used car prices were up 3.4%. That's the biggest gain in 29 years. Why are used car prices shooting up the most in 29 years? Because we destroyed a bunch of new cars, used cars. Remember cash for clunkers? People that had used cars that might have been worth about $4,000 or $3,500 that they would have traded in to buy a new car. Instead, those cars were destroyed in cash for clunkers. So now they're not on the new car, used car lots. So we have fewer used cars, so prices are going up. Isn't that great? We destroyed a bunch of working cars, and now people who want to buy used cars have to pay more money to buy them because of class for clunkers. Another negative consequence of foolish government policy designed to artificially stimulate our economy. You know, talking about foolish government policy, I'm going to get to debate this Sunday in New York City, a debate sponsored by uh, Princeton University. And it features three people, me and Alan Blinder, who was the economic advisor under Bill Clinton and who was the vice chairman of the Federal Reserve, and another guy who was a sitting a voting member of the FOMC. And me, the three of us are going to debate the economy, the stimulus, uh, the Obama agenda. Uh, I think it's going to be covered by the New York Times. I think it might be on Yahoo Finance. I'm sure it'll show up on, on, on the Internet or on YouTube. So make sure to look for that. I don't know if it's going to be live, but certainly by next week. But I am, I am recording it. on. I, I'm doing it live in New York City uh, this Sunday. I think it's at 6 o'clock. So it should be a very interesting, interesting event. Anyway, that's it for today. I've got a town meeting tonight, uh, so I probably won't be able to host a Wall Street Unspun, my radio show that's on later tonight. I might be able to make it for the second half, so if I'm not there for the, ho for the whole show, understand why I'm away. 
Uh, it has to do with the campaign uh, for shift for Senate. It's moving ahead. We're continuing to make headway. Oh, it looks like one of the opponents, uh, Sam Caligiri, uh, is going to be dropping out of the race. He was the, the conservative one, theoretically, in the race. So hopefully I'll be able to pick up his supporters. But the bad news is I'm in last place again. I was in, I had just passed him. So I was in last place. And that based on the last polls, I was in fourth place. I was ahead of Sam. Now that he's going to be dropping out, I'm back in last place again. But I think it, it won't be too long before I pass uh, Tom Foley, who's, who's, who's just ahead of me. And then it'll be uh, Simmons, uh, Linda McMahon, and me. So things are going to get a lot more interesting. And I, again, I appreciate your continued support, your donations at shiftforsenate.com. And of course, we are still working on the program for the volunteers. I promise we'll be calling on you soon. So if you haven't already volunteered at shiftforsenate.com, go to the website, volunteer. I can use your help uh, to get into Washington and to kick these guys who don't know what they're doing out of Washington so we can turn this ship around and stop this country uh, from moving in this direction uh, as quickly as we can. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll be back again soon.